Hello everyone and welcome to this video which is in our great engine opening series and it covers the modern Benoni. I'm Grandmaster Matthew Sadler and we're uh, basing this video around the fantastic attacking game Komodo Dragon Leela Zero TCC Season 22 Sub-Final Bonus Game 38. The line of the modern Benoni that I selected for the uh, Super Final is one that I've been interested for a very long time um, and uh, this specific move B6 I think I found somewhere in a new in chess yearbook, though I haven't been able to find that reference back. Um, how does the opening go? Well, it's uh, d4, knight f6, c4, c5, d5, e6, knight c3, takes, takes, d6, e4, g6. And now, you know, the standard uh, white approach is, uh, is f4, but this is pretty sharp, you know, you need to know a, a fair amount of theory for that. Um, I've always been very interested in uh, systems against the Bon Benoni that overprotect this pawn on e4. Because the pawn on e4, that's how black tries to get uh, counterplay, um, attack it on the half open file, destabilize the white pieces with breaks on the queen side. So the more protection you have of that pawn on e4, the more likely you are to be able to restrict the typical black modern Benoni counterplay. Um, now, I've played uh, systems with uh, bishop g3, bishop g7, knight e2, played that quite successfully uh, in, my, uh, in my youth, and uh, I've also played mostly this system with f3 that really, you know, shores up that pawn on e4 and really tries to uh, stifle black's counterplay. Another system that I've looked at from time to time is this move knight g e2. And after bishop g7, the knight comes round to g3, really giving that pawn some extra support castles bishop e2 and uh, the nice thing about uh, playing the uh, uh, the knight to g3 in this way is that um, well it leaves the f pawn free and this f pawn can go to f4 and that can uh, help uh, well create some uh, some danger you know e5 breaks or f5 against the uh, the black king side i also have to point out that this uh, also arises from a, a system in the king's indian that was uh, recommended by Raymond Keane all those years ago in his uh, attacking repertory for white 1d4 which uh, actually was uh, kind of the uh, uh, the cornerstone of my uh, d4 repertory for many years actually um, and that's uh, the system g6 knight c3 bishop g7 e4 d6 and then knight e2 castles knight g3 in this position and uh, well you know if black plays c5 we play d5 and uh, well, we know what we're getting. So yeah, you know, very, very uh, uh, interesting and uh, plenty of transpositional possibilities. So after bishop e2, yeah, b6 was the, uh, the move that I picked up from this uh, theoretical article. So b6 is not the main move for black in this position, but I have faced it on a, a number of occasions, often when uh, black players have been a little bit surprised by my choice of opening. Um, what's the idea of b6? We're basically looking to play uh, bishop to a6, swap off the light squared bishops, and then afterwards um, expand on the uh, on the queen side. Um, now you might ask, you know, why are you exchanging off the light squared bishops? Isn't this uh, white's uh, bad bishop restricted by the pawns on uh, e4 and d5? You are sort of, but um, you know, black often has a big problem um, with this bishop on c8, um, getting it active, getting it involved in the play. So exchanging off is not bad. And by exchanging off the light squared bishops, you weaken white's control of the queenside light square. So hopefully give yourself a bit more opportunity to get in a6, b5 and c4. And then maybe, who knows, a knight coming in uh, d7, e5 to, to, uh, to d3. Um, However, after b6, white's got quite a few possibilities here. And, uh, well, my engines uh, played quite a few. And, uh, well, we're going to have a look at what happened in the, the Sufi, the super final, the subfi, the sub final, that's at the TCC. And there's also a match run on, uh, on Navratil's channel, uh, which is uh, called the Pro Sufi. And there, uh, Stockfish was playing against, uh, against Leela. So that's not a, a, an official match, but it's uh, always very, very interesting to see what, uh, what happens there as well. So um, uh, actually, if you look at uh, what the engines did from these positions, they just went for Rook's pawns. Now, uh, Komodo in the, uh, in the super final uh, played a4 against uh, Stockfish. And this is a very common plan. The idea is after Bishop a6, we play Bishop b5, and we force the exchange of uh, bishops on our terms as white. Um, just uh, this pawn on b5 
ties down the pawn on a7, it means that black's going to have big difficulties getting in a6 and b5 afterwards. And um, yeah, you know, I mean, after a5, castles, knight d7, h3, knight e8, rook a4, making nice use of that uh, pawn, then um, uh, white was just uh, a little bit better in this position. Uh, black's queenside counterplay is not really happening. Um, but on the other hand, it's you know never easy to to break through these uh, these types of positions. Um, Stockfish uh, drew with black against Komodo in the super final, but it was a little bit better for um, for white. However, there's a much more uh, aggressive option, and uh, H4 was played by uh, uh, most of the engines. So h5 is very, very dangerous. Uh, Stockfish did play bishop a6 in a, a game against Leela, but after h5, this was, um, well, it was just a, you know, a lovely big bit of pressure against the black queen side, king side for, uh, for free there. So h5 was the move. And now I was so delighted when Komodo Dragon against Leela Zero played this move, which is e5, which I think was the point of the theoretical article I saw. Um, we're going to come back to uh, to that one uh, in a lot more detail. Probably have a look at a few other possibilities first. But what on earth could be the point of this uh, move e5? Actually, it's a very typical uh, break in the Benoni. Um, what happens is that after d takes e5, um, the, um, uh, the the black dark squared bishop, which is really the pride and joy of black's position, is blocked behind this pawn on e5. Um, the d pawn becomes mobile, and we get this e4 square for um, uh, for uh, a knight, which um, yeah you know can be a, a very useful square for uh, future attacks against the um, uh, the black king side. Now this sort of pawn break is normally played um, when white's already got a pawn on f4 and uh, after you go e5, d takes e5 and f5. Um, but um, yeah, even in this position it looks extremely dangerous and well we'll see how, uh, how uh, Leela found it so difficult to cope with in our, uh, um, in our uh, featured game. Um, just in the, uh, um, uh, in the, in the uh, super final uh, bishop g5 was played uh, by Stockfish against Komodo. And after knight bd7, we got uh, queen c2, a6, f4, b5, and now this break, e5, d takes c5, and f5. Um, and uh, well, you can see how dangerous this is. The, uh, the pawn, the bishop's blocked in by the pawn, and this having f4 to f5 in means we've also got a lot of pressure against the black king side. And of course, black's played h5, so if this g pawn goes, then the h5 pawn goes as well. And uh, well, we covered this in a, in a video already uh, after e4, castle queen side. Completely crazy stuff, but um, uh, Komodo played very, very well to defend there. Um, also, um, in the sub-final, Leela against Komodo. Well, Leela played castles, and then after a6, played f4, b5, queen c2, c4. And I'll be honest, you know, I really thought that this was um, uh, going to be very, very strong for white, because um, uh, actually, if you look at the black queenside counterplay, black's played uh, a6, b6, and then b5 afterwards. So black is a move down on, uh, on its normal counterplay. And well, white's done nothing wrong. White's just really developed very, very fast. But somehow uh, the engines managed to keep it uh, sort of under control. Um, but again, you know, this break, e5 and f5 came in. Um, Komodo played like a real Benoni player. Instinctive reaction, e4. Open up that uh, dark squared bishop diagonal. Takes, takes. Um, bishop f3 and rook e5 and uh, yeah somehow uh, Komodo managed to cause enough problems uh, enough activity to uh, inconvenience the white pieces and uh, it ended up as a draw but it was uh, yeah you know looked pretty dangerous for uh, for black it must be said so I mean bishop g5 is a pretty good continuation but e5 is what the crowd wanted well what I wanted and then told the crowd that they wanted that too d takes c5 and bishop g5 so this is a uh, nice, uh, nice uh, flowing chess for, um, uh, for white. Um, the inclusion of these moves h4 and h5 gives the bishop on g5 a very nice uh, spot. And actually there's already one very dangerous idea here, and that's to play bishop h5, g takes h5, and then knight takes h5. Um, exploiting the pin on the knight on f6, attacking the bishop on g7, and just blasting open the, um, uh, the black king side. So that explains Leela's next move, which was uh, queen d7, just getting out of that pin. 
Um, but actually, um, yeah, I've seen this game, uh, this uh, this idea in my uh, engine matches, and it had turned out very badly, which was kind of why I was hoping for this uh, for this opening. Um, it looks like the best move that Black has got is to play Queen E8, um, and um, well, there's uh, there's uh, uh, a few differences, but uh, we'll be able to compare that better um, when we see what uh, what happens in the game. But um, this was kind of um, um, doing all right for uh, for Black, although it felt very dangerous. For example, uh, this was. Um, uh, uh, Stockfish against Leela Zero in one of my engine games uh, that I played at home. Uh, Bishop A6 takes takes Knight E4, Bishop G7 castles, and uh, you know White really looks set to uh, to come with G4 and D6 and Knight D5. And uh, well, yeah, I mean um, uh, Black managed to to sort of hold it by uh, trying to to mess things up really, but it was always you know very very pleasant for uh, for White to play. <coughs> Pardon me. I, you know, I definitely like to uh, to play this position as white. Um, but still, Queen E8 was uh, just a little bit better because after Queen D7, uh, Komodo played this very aggressive plan that it had also played against Coivisto 7-0 in one of my uh, engine matches. Just very simple, you know, just takes takes Knight E4, Bishop G7, and then at G4. And um, yeah, I mean, when you've got the uh, uh, the Queen on E8. Not totally obvious to me, but you know these um, uh, plans with g4 are a lot less dangerous. Actually, this queen on e8 is uh, is very very useful. Defending the pawn on g6, for example, I can't go queen g4. F5 happens, and uh, well, you know, if you uh, um, if you go h5, I can do stuff like uh, like f5, and again, I'm I'm covering the g6 square. So it's just um, you know kind of uh, just really useful from a defensive point of view. Um, also, I mean, I guess, you know, the queen is also allowing, you know, a knight to come across here. Um, so uh, uh, just a little bit better defensive shape, I think, than uh, than queen d7. But here it takes takes, knight e4, and then g4. And, uh, well, Leela didn't dare take that pawn on g4 and play the move f5. Um, and here, uh, probably dragon improved over its earlier game. It had played uh, g takes f5. Queen f5, rook g1 against uh, Coivisto, and won a very, very good game there. Um, but um, this looked even more powerful. Bishop b5, queen d8, and knight g5. Um, we've got all sorts of threats here. I mean, uh, g takes h5 is uh, is really dangerous. Um, and, uh, well, d6 is also not too shabby. And that is actually what uh, Komodo replied to a6 with. It played the move d6 which uh, I tweeted, ouch, 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 and I still feel it. <laughs> that queen's coming to uh, to d5 check. Quite an extraordinary episode uh, occurs now that uh, TCC chatter Martin Van Essen pointed out. Um, a takes b5, we go queen d5 check, king h8, queen a8. And you're going to see that um, all of black's queenside pieces end up getting captured on their starting squares by the white queen. So b4 played, queen takes b8, b takes c3 b takes c3 amazing you know how long uh, white can just remain with the uh, the king in the center no worries after e4 castles doesn't fit in too great maybe with a move uh, g4 but again it's it's just really difficult for black to to really get at the um at the uh, white position this knight on g5 um supported by the pawn h4 is absolutely huge and of course you know we've always got ideas like queen c7 or something like that just to exchange off the uh, the black queen so yeah you know white's definitely got resources there but after hg rook d1 queen e8 was played and here um uh, komodo completed its queen side set by playing queen takes c8 here um takes and d7 and the big problem is that um well actually we're just threatening d8 queen so, for example, if you were to play queen c7, I'd just go, uh, uh, I could just go d8 uh, queen, takes, takes, and, uh, well, you can't go uh, queen takes d8 because I've got knight f7. And unfortunately, you, you can't even just uh, sort of bail out a little bit, really, because um, after bishop f8, I go rook check, you've only got g7, and then I go knight e6 check and uh, take on c7. That's really... Uh, really 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 painful uh you know but shows the the power of restricting the uh the black king you know big theme of course that we learned from uh from alpha zero's games so after d7 queen d8 knight e6 was played um yeah we're just uh looking to uh, eject the queen and play d8 queen so um well 
Yeah, Leela tried to grab some material, but after rook d5 and then knight d8 takes takes and rook c1, bishop g7, rook b1, everything was falling apart. This uh, pawn on b6 was going and uh, obviously this pawn on d7 is really huge. So uh, Leela did not last long there. But a really, really interesting game, I felt. And uh, yeah, I mean, you really got the whole uh, range of possibilities there, I felt, you know, from all the engine games. So um, this idea of a4 and bishop b5, which I think is really useful, definitely, uh, you know, a low uh, risk way of playing, you know, that guarantees a good advantage against uh, these b6 ideas in the modern Benoni. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, I thought that this idea very nice you know typical idea um this e5 break in the benoni but in a very unusual setting you know um and uh well i also liked you know some of these games where uh, um you know white castle queenside because you just never see that in the benoni really some uh, fantastic games there but i'll put all the links to uh, to all the games in the uh, uh in the comments to uh, to this video so you can uh, have a look at all of them um so yeah really wonderful game there you know and uh well i hope you've uh, learned uh, a little bit there about the uh, the modern benoni just want to say uh, you know if you like this video why not give a like subscribe to the channel and uh, maybe even take a uh, a look at my new book the silicon road to chess improvement about which i'm very very proud um really you know masses of absolutely wonderful engine games that uh, no one has ever seen before um but you know like the best chess that's ever been seen and uh, also you know lots of practical tips for uh, how to train with engines and uh, lots of my secret training games that i've played with engines under all sorts of different conditions over the years so uh, i think very very interesting if you're uh, interested in engine chess but otherwise you know thanks very much for watching and hope to see you at the next video thanks for watching